Hey folks, welcome back to Nintendo Prime. I am your uh, your your host, your moderator, your discussion extraordinaire, Nathaniel Rumpel Jance, and uh, we're going to be talking about Nintendo Switch Online. So we are getting a new game for Nintendo Switch Online this week, right? We're getting Pokemon Snap, in my opinion, one of the best games on the N64. You know, we ended up finally getting a sequel many, many years later in new Pokemon Snap, which again, I think is one of the best games on the Nintendo Switch. So I think that we are in a point now where that is the final game. Actually, I know this. This is the final game Nintendo teased for Nintendo 64. And I think it's worth having a discussion now about what the future of Nintendo Switch Online for the classic system is going to be. I know we all want virtual console and all that. We're not going to dive into that. We're just going to focus on the Nintendo Switch Online and the aspect of what they could add to these classic game services moving forward and what I think they should do uh, because Reggie fils himself has actually come out and talked about this. He is the former president of Nintendo of America and he obviously thinks Nintendo should be focusing on more N64 games, GameCube and Wii. And I, you know, look, they add GameCube and Wii to the service and I will just be, I'll be probably finally checking out Nintendo Switch Online. I don't really play it. I mean, here, here's the fun thing about this conversation. I don't play these classic games. Let me rephrase that. I don't replay these classic games because I'm always looking forward to what's next. I'm not somebody who is big in replaying games I've already spent a lot of time with in the past. Some people love replaying games, love reliving the memories. As an example, hey, Turtles in Time. I have a lot of massive memories with Turtles in Time, both at the arcade and on my Super Nintendo. But guess what? I'm way more excited playing Shredder's Revenge than I would be replaying Turtles in Time because I don't know what's next. I don't know what's coming. The, the, the mystery of not knowing is what ends up bringing me a lot of thrill when I'm playing games versus just re-experiencing something I already know what's going to happen. You know, I've, I've said this before. We have a, a member in our community who just started playing Breath of the Wild for the very first time, and I'm jealous of them because they get to experience my favorite game of all time for the first time all over again, and I'll never get that experience again. Well, knock on wood that I never get that experience again. I would hate to have, you know, Alzheimer's or something else that ends up making it feel like every experience is new again, as wonderful as that might be. But, <coughs> but when talking about the classic games on Nintendo Switch Online, I do think they've done an okay job, even though their communication hasn't always been consistent. But we have to focus on, I feel like, what's going to be coming next. Now, the most obvious, of course, is dealing with the leak we had before, Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, right? Like, those are the big leaks we've already had and had some definitive um, information for that looks like they're going to be added to Nintendo Switch Online right next, right? Like, I, we, we could just add Game Boy, and there's a ton of games I love on Game Boy. From the original Tetris, of course, to the original Link's Awakening. And I know Nintendo includes Game Boy Color in the mix, you know, Super Mario Land. Like, there's a lot of really amazing games I played in, on Game Boy that I think would work well on this service and make sense. But for honest, Game Boy is more along the lines of um, a Nintendo Entertainment System for adding. It's not super exciting. Then you get to Game Boy Advance, and that's where you kind of get to Nintendo's handheld library that sort of mirrors what the Super Nintendo did. And I do think that that is exciting as well. I think that is more exciting than just Game Boy. And... To be honest, we've never fully had Game Boy and Game Boy Advance added even to Virtual Console back in the day. So getting them on Nintendo Switch Online, getting 20, 30, 40, 60 games on these, uh, for these things out over the next couple of years, I think would be the most logical next step. When I go back to what Reggie said, uh, when he put out there, hey, they should focus on more N64 games, which I agree. The problem is a lot of the rest of the N64 library is heavily licensed. Uh, I think Nintendo's going to have a hard time getting some of that stuff. Uh, but setting that aside, even 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 just kicking that to the curb, people forget the N64 didn't have a huge library of games. It's just the games they did have were really, really good. Looking elsewhere to the GameCube and the Wii, I find this to be an interesting perspective because, look, GameCube and Wii are almost sacred to Nintendo, right? For some reason, they, they value the IPs on those platforms to a level that is just beyond um, our understanding, really, because GameCube especially, there's no reason we can't have F-Zero from the GameCube on Virtual Console. If you're not going to remaster, you're not going to remake, or you could still remaster and remake. Link's Awakening, remaster, remake, you can still give us the original 
and the DX version on this system. What's wrong with having both? There's never anything wrong with like remaking, remastering F Zero, but then also giving us the GameCube one. Like, there's it, it, why can't we get both? It, it, it'd be the perfect mishmash of both worlds. So, I think what Reggie's focused on, and he could say this now that he doesn't work at Nintendo, is what would actually excite people more: Game Game Boy and Game Boy Advance, or GameCube and Wii. I mean, you might as well throw DS in the mix, too, while we're at it. Because, hey, we're going to go to Game Boy Advance and go all the way to Wii levels. Might as well just say, screw it, let's get all the best DS games as well. Because why not? Look, this service is one that has struggled to excite when it comes to the classic library. People do like the DLC. They like that you can get the Animal Crossing stuff. If you don't have the Splatoon 2 DLC, hey, you know, they toss that in there. Uh, they like, you know, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe DLC. So they're doing really well adding DLC packs, and I think this is going to be a trend moving forward. I think we're going to see a lot of Nintendo's DLC on their games being added to the service, and that's already enticing in and of itself, especially if you plan to buy that DLC, save that money, you know. But making the classic things excite, like what would excite me is GameCube. Because I don't replay games that I haven't played or that, that I've played extensively, but I will play games that I haven't. And it's really the GameCube era where I start to run into a number of titles that I just didn't fully explore. I'll give you an example, Metroid Prime 2. Look, I love the original Metroid Prime, played the hell out of it. Really don't have an interest in replaying the original. However, Metroid Prime 2, I basically have never turned it on. I'm ashamed to kind of say that, actually. For how much I love Metroid, that I, I just have never really played Metroid Prime. They re-released it as a trilogy on Wii. Still didn't play it. I played, Corru I, I play, I played Metroid Prime 3 Corruption. Heck, I played Metroid Prime Hunters. But I never played Metroid Prime 2. So I would play that. That would excite me. But there's a number of other GameCube games. Like, like let me just bring up the best, best GameCube games of all time. You know, just a, a, a list of games. And I can go over a bunch that I never fully played. I did, I did fully play Sunshine. Uh, didn't care much about Mario Kart Double Dash at the time. I didn't like the whole two-character thing. Now, I'd be much more willing to play around with an experiment with it. I would love to deep dive into that. Uh, Eternal Darkness. I've only spent about an hour playing Eternal Darkness back in the day. I would like to dive all the way in, and Nintendo owns that IP. So that would be a possible addition that would really, really excite me. Uh, I did play the hell out of Beautiful uh, Beautiful Joe and Rogue Leader, uh, so those ones wouldn't necessarily be um, something that I would be super, super stoked about. Uh, what about Pikmin 2? I didn't actually spend a ton of time with Pikmin 2. So I wouldn't mind diving back into that. Killer 7, another game that I would like to dive and get a lot more time into. Now, I did play the hell out of Tales of Symphonia, Fire Emblem. Uh, I did play the hell out of those ones. You know, Time Splitters 2. Uh, I, I might be willing to try out Time Splitters 2 just to see if they add, you know, if they add that online multiplayer. That's really what's going to make me want to try out Time Splitters 2 again. I did enjoy the multiplayer in that game quite a bit. Wasn't a big fan of Soul Calibur 2. I'm still not a big fan of Soul Calibur 2. But I understand why people love that game. Uh, I never really played Super Monkey Ball 2. I would love to really, really deep dive into that. Notice I'm not saying any Zelda games because I I, I did. Like, I'm probably not going to replay Bot and Katos. I played the hell out of that and I beat it. Um, you know, Skies of Arcadia as well. Of course, I played the hell out of that and beat that. Uh, the original Time Splitters I did as well. Um, but, like, even Beautiful Joe 2. Like, I played the hell out of the first one but didn't exactly enjoy the second one. You gotta remember, GameCube kind of came at a weird time. I'm in high school, but also they're transitioning to Wii, and I'm transitioning to graduating because I graduated in 2005. So it was a weird time in my life where I was just super busy with sports. And so there's a lot of games I just didn't make the time to play, uh, even though I was working and, and obviously could afford all of them. Um, I never played Toadstool Tour. You know, I never played that that Mario Golf game. I wouldn't mind maybe checking that one out. So for me personally, the, the, the system I would like to see added is GameCube. I played the hell out of everything on Wii and Wii U. But GameCube is the one that would excite me the most. Now, what I want to know, obviously, is throwing this to you guys. What platform be it added would excite you the most? Is it Game Boy? Is it Game Boy Advance? Is it DS? Is it Wii? Is it GameCube? I know Reggie's trying to argue for three systems, and he's just picking popular platforms. 
But what I want to know is what would excite you for a Nintendo Switch Online? Let's presume they're never going to give us a virtual console experience. Let us buy and download the games. Okay, we're only going to get them through a subscription service. So what systems and games could they add to NSO to excite you? What's that next step? Or is it just more N64 games? I don't know if we're going to get a lot more. But that also is kind of the problem with NSO, isn't it? We don't really know. Some people like the mystery. Others fear we're just going to go six, seven months a year without anything new. And that would be kind of sad. Anyways, guys, let me know what you think is next for Nintendo Switch Online. Uh, I hope you guys have an amazing rest of your day. And as always, folks, I'll catch you in that next video.